I'm at a rock mark hoping to pick up bass. It's quarter past six in the morning and I've deliberately got down here at this time to catch first light. The tide has been flooding in for about hour and three quarters now. But before we get into the fishing, let's have a look at the structure of this mark and the lure that I'm going to be using for this session and the reasons why I've chosen this lure. We're looking at the mark here early in the flood tide, but basically this mark is all rough ground. It doesn't matter where you cast or how far you cast, the seabed is rough. It's a mixture of rocks and kelp and weed with just a few small sandy patches. So I've got this large rock to the, to the right here and you can just see the end of the rock there just being covered by water. Then another, another large rock here which is actually much bigger than it looks on the screen. It runs quite a bit way, quite a way further to the left, parallel to the shoreline, and it's wider. You can just see part of the rock there, a flat part of the rock, just being covered by water. And then further out where these arrows are pointing, there's another reef, another rock that rises up from the seabed, which mainly stays submerged, ex except for the end of the reef here, which exposes on spring tides. Now these are great features to attract the bass for a few reasons. You've got the currents that are formed when the, on, when the tide's flooding in or ebbing out, particularly on spring tides. The currents that are formed caused by these obstacles around the rock and when the water's washing over the rock. You've got the gullies that are formed in between, which can be used as corridors for the bass to move through, maybe to other parts of this mark in general. But also the gullies that they can sit, they can hold in the current, either one end or another, again, particularly on, on spring tides, just hold there in the current to ambush their prey. So a lot of features. Now I've hooked back bass at various parts of this marked mark. I've hooked them over and around this far reef here, which is a, about to get past the reef, it's a cast of about 75 yards from the high water mark, so a fair way. I've hooked them in this deep gully here in between the, the two rocks. I've hooked them just before this rock. I've had bass take on top of this rock and also had them follow the lure over this rock into this deep gully close to the shoreline and take virtually at your feet. And likewise over and around this rock on the right here. Now I sometimes fish this mark with conventional lures such as plugs and soft plastics. And with those lures from the high water mark, I can reach over this rock here and into this gully here and draw the lures back, back to the shoreline. But it's really useful at times to fish a, a distance casting lure so that I can reach over this reef here, even if there's a bit of a breeze. And cover, just cover as much of this, this rock in general as I can. And as I said, it's basically all a reefy area to maximise my chances of hooking a fish. So this is one of the reasons why I'm using the line through sand a lot on this session, because it's a distance casting lure, similar to, to if you were using, let's say, a metal lure, it will cast a long way. And I'm able, as long as it's not too breezy, I'm able to reach beyond this far reef here. But the other reason is that it's a brilliant sand limitation lure. Now I've learned from past experience that any lure that imitates a sand eel well is always going to be a good bass lure subject to the bass being there and feeding. And this does, it's probably the best hard lure sand, sand eel imitation that I've ever seen. I've got good sand eel imitation soft plastics, but this to date is the best sand eel imitation hard lure that I've seen. And I started using it earlier this year and found it to be good. But not just for bass, it's a really useful lure to use for mixed species. It, because of its casting ability, it will, it will catch mackerel, mackerel love it. It will pick up pollock and I've had garfish on it. So it, basically it's a, it's a good all round lure. So that's the mark. So what we'll do now, we'll have a look at the line through sand eel. And, for those of, and explain for those of you that have never seen a line through lure before, what the benefits are of using a line through lure and also look at how you set how I set the lure up
So for those of you that don't know, the difference between a line through lure and a conventional lure is that with a conventional lure, the line coming down from your rod tip, your leader, is either tied or clipped on, clipped to the top of the lure. Whereas with the line through setup, it is as it says, your line is thread through the center of the lure and then it's tied directly to the hook via a little split ring. Now the theory behind this is that, that when you're playing a fish, you've got, you've got more of a direct contact with it. Direct, the line going through the lure, the lure directly to the, to the hook fish. And there's less chance of the lure, the weight of the lure, helping the fish to throw the hook. And what happens is, and you, you'll, you'll, you'll see this later, is that when you hook a fish, because this is not fixed, what happens? The fish, you're playing the fish, the fish is tugging away like this. What tends to happen, the, the lure and the hook become separate like that. And, and when, you, when you pull the fish in, you'll see the lure in, in about that position. So if you can imagine, let's take the lure away. You can imagine you're free lining. You've got your line, and then just a hook, and you've got a bit of bait on, you hook a fish, you're playing the fish, there's absolutely nothing in, in between. There's nothing, there's, the, the, there's nothing at all. It's completely direct contact with the fish. So it's, it's similar with this. Um, but if you imagine that this was, let's say, fixed, like in the conventional way to the end there, that the hook was fixed, and your leader was fixed to the top of the lure and you hook a fish and you're playing a fish and this lure is hanging out the fish's mouth and it is possible that the weight of the lure could help the fish dislodge, dislodge the hook, throw the hook. So that's the theory that there's less chance of the fish being able to throw the hook. And I have to say with the fish that I've hooked with this, Today, it does seem to work. that You do seem to lose less fish with this method. All right, so this, this line through sand hill is a savage line through sand hill. It's the 19 gram, 125 mil, absolutely perfect size for bass, in my opinion. Now, no, I'm not trying to sell these lures. And no, I have absolutely nothing to do with the company that makes them. It's just that I found it to be good and and therefore I'm, I'm showing it and passing that information on exactly the same as I've done in the past with other bass lures that I found to be good like this one, the brilliant Tackle House Feed Shallow. 19 grams, 125mm. Comes in different colours. This is the Sandhill colour. I've got a few other, of the other colours. And it also comes with two hooks. You've got a choice of hooks. You've either got the treble or you've got a single hook. And of course, you've got that little split ring as well to attach the hook to. It comes with three beads, different colored beads, a couple of colors and a glass bead. Now, my advice would be for bass fishing is not to use this treble hook. Now, the reason I'm saying not to use it is because of its size. I think it's it, it's too small for bass fishing. But these lures were originally designed and used out in Scandinavia, I believe, mainly for sea trout. But, but and of course, if it, you were fishing for sea trout, that treble hook would, would, would be absolutely fine. And it would be fine if you're just using them for mackerel or, say, small pollock or, or garfish or... Or whatever but if you do want to use a treble hook my advice would be to put a much put your, put a bigger bigger one on uh, than it comes with so what I do is I use the single hook that comes with it which is as you can see the gape is much much bigger and so I use that and the other reason is that when you hook a fish with the the single hook it, it just it's just uh, easier to be honest to to unhook the fish and there's there's less there's less chance of damaging the fish that you that you uh, intend to return now to do the, the way I set it up 
what I do, I've got my line coming down from my rod tip, in my case it's braid. I tie a swivel, small swivel, directly to the end of the braid and then to the other end, end of the swivel I tie about two and a half feet to three feet of fluorocarbon. In this case it's 15 pound fluorocarbon but you use 20 but you could use up, up to 30. About two and a half to three feet thread the the lure on then pop one of the beads on and beads are, are there to protect the the knot of the hook then tie the other end of the line to the little split ring that holds the hook now i have heard that some a few people have had one or two problems with breakages with with the uh, line through setup um, I'm not quite sure why, whether it's breakages with this, this lure running on the line maybe causing abrasion or whether it's breakages caused by this maybe knocking on the, the hook, the knot of the hook there. But I have to say, I've not had any problems whatso whatsoever with this setup. I'm, I am yet, and I've cast, I've used this lure quite a bit over the last couple of months cast it out many many times and I've not had one breakage caused by by uh, problems of abrasion or damage to not so personally I've, I, I, I've no experience of, of, of any problems but what I do do is I check the check the line here that the, there's no abrasions what I do I use it a couple of couple of times and and just in case and then put, put some new line on just in case there's a little bit of abrasion or just in case there there is a bit of damage to, to the hook, to, to the hook knot. Right, I'm ready to go. The light is still pretty low, so hopefully the camera will pick up some detail. But the rocks, the rocks are just about covered now with enough water so I, I, I can work a lure over the rocks. I've got a couple of seals that keep popping their head up just in front of me, which is a bit of a nuisance, but there's nothing I can do about it. Hopefully I won't see them come up with a four pound bass in their mouth. So the idea is that I'm going to cast in a fan, going to cover all the, as far as I can, going to cover all those areas that we looked at earlier. I've got a bit of a, a, a light on shore, but it's very, very light winds. So I should be able to reach that far reef that, that I talked about, particularly with this long cast in lure. So the idea is, as I mentioned, to cast out as far as I can, to draw the lures back over the, over the rough ground down across the gullies and maybe let the lure drop down into the gullies uh, when there's a bit more depth of water and then draw draw it over the rocks that are close to me and then in, into and an over the gully that's in front of me right up to the shoreline there's a seal there just just breached there right in front of me don't know if the camera will pick it up bit a bit of a nuisance really but there you go Well, I'm just going to slowly retrieve this lure and then occasionally give it a pause to let it flutter down when, when I feel that I can. But obviously when I get close to these rocks here, I'm going to have to judge that from, based on knowledge of this mark, I'm going to have to make sure that the, the lure is working nice and shallow so I don't get snagged. Later, when there's a bit more water covering the... There we go, we're in. Now this could, this might be a bass, but it could, it, it could be a coarse pollock, or it could be, um, especially with this low light, it could be, it could be mackerel. But at least if I can land this, wh whatever it is, we we haven't blanked. Just hope the, hope the blimmin' seal don't come and grab this now. Uh, interesting what it is. Might be a bass, and it is, it is a bass. Well, how about that? First, that is the very, very first cast. It's a bass. It's only, it's only a very, very small bass, but uh, never mind. And it look, looks to be well hooked. Yeah, it's only a, 
only a baby bass, but it's a bass. And we've got it. Well, that's a pretty good start, even if it's only a baby. Right, I'm gonna get this unhooked here. And fortunately, using this this single hook, um, it's, 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 well, it's nicely hooked and easy to get unhooked. Fantastic. Well, there you go. Only a baby, but that's a bass. But even though this is only a small bass, even if this is the only bass that I catch today, I'm still going to show this video and the reason I'm going to show it is to, for you, those of you that are fairly new to bass fishing, is to try and uh, sort of learn of rock, the type of rock marks to look for and that bass might populate, even if it's small. But the thing is, to get the, the better bass, it's just a matter of persistence, uh, the, the right, maybe the right tide, the right time of the day when the, when the larger bass uh, might be here. But, there you go, at least we've got a bass uh, and we'll get, we'll get it back. And away it goes. This seal here, the one of the two that here keeps popping its head up right here. Now there's two ways of looking at it when the seals are like this. Yes, it can, you can think, well, I'm not gonna catch anything. But the, on the other hand, if they're here, they're here for a reason, that they're here because they know there might be a few fish around. Okay, on, the, on that cast, I've cast it over that, over that far reef that we looked at. And then just, it'd be, the lure would be over the, over the gully, the deeper water now, so I'm just going to let it flutter down a bit. and then continue to draw it towards the rock that's in front of me. And now I've just, I've just got to keep the lure nice and shallow now. Well, I'm okay now with the rocks in uh, in front of me. There's enough water over them now where I can just, just keep winding, even, even though it's a sinking lure. Uh, I can just keep winding and uh, the lure will work over the rocks. It's just a little bit of the rock still exposed, exposing to the left of me, out probably out, out of camera view. But uh, where I'm actually drawing the lure, fishing, um, I'm okay, I can just keep winding. And just keep winding right to the right to the edge. Um, they will follow. They will follow it in at times and, and take and take at your take at your feet. Having said that, I, ju I literally I just caught the top of the rock there. But fortunately, um, fortunately, only just a bit of weed. One of the problems with this mark, with these rocks, is, is when there's only a little bit of water covering over them. Of course, when you're trying to draw, play a fish in, it's stopping it um, getting down into those rocks. And it is another bass. And a small one again, but a little bit bigger than the other one.
Well, only a small one again, but even so, it, it, it's a bass. It's what I'm here for. And away it goes. Now that bass took this lure at maximum casting distance. I cast it out as far as I could, let it drop down a bit and a, a few turns and bang, it was on. So it just goes to show that although the majority of the bass that you catch and the majority of the marks that I fish for bass, you really don't need to cast more than about 50 yards. But there are occasions when lures like this or, or maybe even, even, and even some metal lures are good when you when you need you feel you need to get that little bit extra distance to stand a, a chance of catching them at distance but also catching them close to shore and we're in Well, mackerel this time, but doesn't matter. I'm, all, I'm always pleased to catch mackerel. In fact, it's quite handy actually if you're going bass fishing to um, to have a lure that will catch plenty of other species like like mackerel. Um, it, just in case, I mean, if there's no, you come for bass, but if there's no bass around. Uh, at least, at least you, you're catching something. Right, bang, bang. This feels like a this feels like a bass. Yeah, it is. So great. One thing I love love about this lure is you don't really need to you, you don't need to do anything. Um, yeah, you can let it drop and let it flutter down, but really all you need to do is just is just just wind it. It's just a case the pace you wind it, how um, whether it'll work deeper or whether it'll work shallower as a as a sinking lure. Well, only a baby again, but never mind. It's it's great sport, and the, and the thing is, I've noticed there is a a large amount. Uh, actually, this this looks. I might lose this. this. This looks only just hooked. There is a large amount of small bass around. Hard hard to find the better ones. I think to find the better ones, you probably got to come out, um, come out and fish at night. Even lure fish at night, you'll stand a better chance of of catching the the better bass. Actually, actually, it was hooked really well. Um, Yeah, but there's a lot of lot of these around, these babies. Well, that's it. I'm going to call it a day now. The fishing's gone completely dead. The sun's up now. It's really bright and there's no sign of any fish. So I'm really glad now that I made the effort and got down here for first light fished the very very low low light conditions where I stood the best chance of success and had that that little flurry of, of, of a few bass and it was a lot of fun now they may have only been baby bass but never mind at least at least I caught bass now I know that there's decent bass out there because I'm regularly seeing good sized line caught bass on a local fishmonger slab so they are out there so it's just a matter of persisting going to marks where you know that produce bass go at the right time and persist and be patient and and there's a there's a chance that you'll pick up one or two decent bass so for those of you that are fairly new to shore bass fishing looking for rock marks what i suggest you do is, is don't go asking people where is that mark or where can i go and catch bass the best thing you can do is do what I did over the years, put the hours in, get out there, walk, walk these areas at, at, on low water spring tides, 
and if it's rock marks look for marks that maybe you've got some some rocks or a little group of rocks that are separate from the shoreline but within casting distance rocks that have got those gullies and having and pathways and avenues for the bass to move through um, and the rocks creating uh, the disturbance create creating a current particularly on the spring tides that the bass love try those spots at the right time of of the day on the right tide and you've got a and the chances are that at some point they will will produce bass and once you find a mark that produces bass even if it starts producing if it produces mainly small bass there is a chance that eventually you'll pick up a decent bass so once again i hope you found that useful and many many thanks for watching